Scott Stewart, Power Products Specialist for Winkle Electric Company. Let's have a short conversation about VFD cable and why you should use it in your variable frequency drive applications. Let's start at the very beginning and talk about what VFD cable is. What is it that makes a VFD cable different from other cables that we would use elsewhere? Believe it or not, there is no standard in the United States that defines for us what a VFD cable is. VFD cable, as we typically talk about it, has some key features. The cable is shielded. The power conductors are insulated using a symmetrical outer coating, typically XLPE insulation. The power conductors are arranged symmetrically within the overall cable jacket. The cable shield is a braided wire or foil tape that essentially acts as a Faraday cage. This prevents high frequency electrical signals from propagating to other wires or devices nearby. The wires that will act as the conductor for voltage and current between a power source, in our case a VFD, and a motor are coated with an insulation that is not THHN insulation, such as the wire found in buildings or I.O. circuitry. Alan Bradley specifies XLPE insulation or cross-linked polyethylene for these conductors. This specialized insulation resists moisture, which helps the insulation maintain its insulating capability over a long period of time. It's also resistant to cold flow. This keeps the insulation from developing thin spots that could allow the electrical energy to propagate. In this image, we see an unacceptable and an acceptable example of how the XLPE insulation should be coated around the conductor. In the image on the left, the unacceptable one, notice how thin the insulation is at the bottom right. We want a nice symmetrical coating around that conductor. This keeps the electricity flowing where we intend to put it. VFD cables are designed such that the conductors are arranged symmetrically. This will minimize the current common mode currents that get induced into neighboring conductors. Three-phase conductors with three symmetrically arranged ground conductors is the best cable design for VFD applications. This is the design that's most effective at reducing common mode currents. The Allen Bradley PowerFlex family of drives typically comes from the factory with their pulse width modulation frequency configured by default to 4 kilohertz or 4,000 cycles per second. In a typical simple VFD application, we have an AC motor that we want to vary the speed. The VFD does this by using the three basic components from which it's built. First is the converter. The converter is the input side of the drive. We feed incoming electricity into the converter and the rectifier circuits convert that power to a fixed DC voltage. That fixed DC voltage is then passed down the DC bus and into the inverter circuit. The inverter circuit uses IGBTs to switch rapidly and build essentially a digital copy of the frequency sine wave that we want to send to the motor, telling it how fast to rotate. If we connected an oscilloscope to our VFD while it was running, you might see an image similar to this. That crisp blue sinusoidal wave that you see in the center of the image that is the frequency that we're feeding to the motor, telling it how fast to rotate. The problem really lies in those jagged red lines. What we see there is not really noise, although we would typically describe it that way. What we're seeing in this image is the fast switching pulse width modulation that's happening to build that sine wave. With no uniform insulation and no shielding, 
that high frequency switching could propagate all over your control system. So if drive one were running with no VFD cable between its drive and its motor, and drive two was also in that cabinet but not running, and we don't have proper isolation of the drive conductors between their drives and respective motors, we can induce common mode current in the idle drive, causing the drive to fault. Commonly, this shows up as a ground fault in a PowerFlex drive. So much more can happen if we're not controlling the electricity and keeping it in the places where we're trying to put it. Here's an example of motor damage where the high frequency pulse width modulation has propagated into the motor and into the motor's bearings, marking the inner bearing races and causing premature damage. Impacts on PLCs, PCs, and other equipment nearby are significant. It's been reported that as much as 100 amps in common mode current has been reported if we're not controlling how this pulse width modulated frequency is being trunked into the ground. Here's the easy solution. Wireway with VFD cable. Notice how the power conductors or grounds are segregated each drive and each motor are independent of one another, and each is independently shielded to help prevent propagation. Drive one can run without inducing significant common mode currents in drive two. Some closing thoughts for you to consider. If you're an end user, the cost of unscheduled downtime and problem solving adds up very quickly. You give yourself a significant advantage over your competition by insisting on BFD cable whenever motors are controlled by variable frequency drives. If you're an original equipment manufacturer, nothing damages your reputation as much as having questionable reliability. Design as many potential problems out of the machinery in the design phase as you can. VFD cable being part of your machine design can help accomplish this. Winkle Electric stocks VFD cable for a wide range of the most commonly used variable frequency drives. We'll help you with specifying the right solution to help you make your next project successful and trouble free. If you're interested in learning more about VFD cables and variable frequency drive applications or any electrical supplies, please reach out to us at Winkle Electric or visit us online at www.winkle.com.